Hello and welcome to Government with Dr. Turner. Today we're going to take a look at the competing narratives under the Articles of Confederation. You already know that politics is about who gets what, when, and how. When groups are competing against each other in a political struggle, they try to gain power by using a narrative. A narrative is basically the story that each side tells so they can get more support for their side. You and I are surrounded by narratives every day. They might be politicians sharing a narrative about who to vote for. They might be advertisers convincing you what to buy. They might be YouTubers explaining why you should like and subscribe. American politics can often be better understood by looking at the competing narratives. As we mentioned in the last video, the political document that announced the dissolution of colonial ties between the United States and United Kingdom was the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence was a political document that advocated colonial self-government. It was not a plan for government. So the new nation had to create some sort of agreement to bind the former colonies together. But the states wanted to protect their own power. They were opposed to the creation of a large national power, and they were distrustful of one another. Because of this environment of distrust, the Articles of Confederation established a confederal system with a very weak central government. One of the biggest differences between the Articles of Confederation and the Constitution to come was that the, under the Articles, the states were sovereign whereas under the Constitution, the people would become sovereign. Each state was sovereign, and the central government only ran the collective business of the states. The central government had no independent source of power or resources. The Articles created no rights or obligations for individuals. Under the Articles of Confederation, the rights and obligations of citizens were determined by each state constitution. The Congress had no power to draft soldiers, no power to tax citizens, no power to regulate commerce, and no power to establish a monetary system. The Articles of Confederation Congress had to rely on the voluntary goodwill and cooperation of the states. The biggest winners under the Articles of Confederation were small farmers and artisans. The main difference between the farmers and the elites after the Revolutionary War was that farmers wanted powerful state governments, whereas the elites wanted a powerful federal government. Economic conditions were poor and taxes were high. The population wanted to take equality seriously and eliminate differences. Laws were passed to ease the burden of debtors and farmers. Property was confiscated or redistributed. Repayment of debts and mortgages could be legally avoided. Economic elites stopped investing and lending money under these conditions. During the period of time during which the United States was governed by the Articles of Confederation, the elites came to fear tyranny by the people. In 1786, American Revolutionary War veteran Daniel Shays led 4,000 rebels in a protest against economic and civil rights injustices. Shays' rebellion demonstrated the frustration of debtors and the failure of the Articles of Confederation. The rebellion frightened and embarrassed the wealthy leaders of society. Ultimately, the Confederation failed because the Articles could not provide economic and political stability. James Madison would write later on in Federalist No. 10 that the Founders needed to discover a Republican remedy for those diseases most incident to Republican government. What he meant was that government had to be structured so that it could contain the will of the people even though it was based on the will of the people. Support grew among the elites of society for a constitutional convention to fix what they saw as the problems with the Articles of Confederation. Let's review. The Articles of Confederation established a confederal system with a very weak central government. 
The biggest winners under the Articles of Confederation were small farmers and artisans. During the period of time in which the United States was governed by the Articles of Confederation, elites came to fear tyranny by the people. Ultimately, the Confederation failed because the Articles could not provide economic and political stability.